Or you've got a marathon athlete here. In your you pointers. Have a, yeah, this is the pointing guys. There, point, on point. Then you have the flushers. And they're more like your sprinters. Okie dokie now. We are here for part three and the final part of this week's Yawa. We are pulling all of our questions from YouTube comments. And if you haven't already seen, know, or understand how this works, I'll break it down for you. Type a comment below a YouTube video. Title it, Yawa comment, and then Yawa question, excuse me. Then finish your comment out or your question in this specific situation. Now, if this is your first time to our channel or this is the first video you're finding of ours, hit the dang subscribe button because most likely you've already listened to a whole bunch of crap and we would appreciate it if you subscribe. Can we answer a question? Mm-hmm. Now that you have now a mouthful, have a mouthful. Of, of goodness from Canada. Canada. That's uh, funny and dirty all at the same time. Moving on. I didn't even get that until you had to go there. Sandra May Wat- Watling. I butchered that. Wat- Watling. Watling. Sorry. Um, first off, I love all your content. Super informative. And you guys are so fun to watch. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Hopefully you'll pick this for a Yawa question. Hey, we did. We did. What is your thoughts on running retrievers and pointers at the same time? Like pointer shows where the bird is, then the retriever flushes it out type of deal. Mm, I currently have a lab, which we run for waterfall, but I'm super interested in a GSP for upland only, even talking to a breeder about the potential of getting one next year. So exciting. Very exciting. I know there would be more training involved. Just wondering your thoughts and opinions because I would love to be able to bring them both out at the same time. Okay, so there are a lot of different things involved with this, but short answer again, because there are some people out there that, you know, don't have any time on there or don't have extra time on their hands and they want the short answer. Yes, you can run them together. That's the short answer. And the long answer is... Like you said, yes, it's going to take more training. It's going to require a higher level of steadiness from that pointing breed dog because they're going on point and then they're having another dog move in past them while they're supposed to still stay there on point, flushing birds in front of them. So it has a higher level expectation for that steadiness. Typically, it's not something that we recommend doing with a young dog in a sense of it's their first bird season because They need to be able to put all of the pieces together that they have learned through training and be successful in the field. And then if you've got a lab coming in and pushing birds out in front of them, A, it's going to be really hard for them to want to continue standing there. And B, they aren't going to get as many of the rewards of the retrieve aspect side of things. So putting all the pieces together for them is really important. After your first season, take the time to polish up their steadiness, um, which is also something we talk about having a dog that's actually um, mature enough for that level of steadiness isn't something that usually happens until after the first season. Now, we haven't had one for a while, but this is going to be one of Ethan's brutally honest comments. Okay. Retrievers in general, well, let's just stick, let's stick the bigger retriever category because there are some smaller flusher retrievers like the Cocker breed, those little yeah, Energizer little bunnies. Um, they've got some go to them. And I think that a majority of them that I've worked with truly, if they're conditioned properly, could keep up with pointers for most of the day, even on those little dinky little legs. They can, I mean, those little, little turds can they can do it. They're zippy little things. Yes. But on average, if it comes down to it, it, it it's, just, it's a fact of uh, it's somebody's going to get butt hurt about this. But pointers are going to out hunt in the field Labradors and a majority of the retrievers out there. And when we say out hunt, they're just going to be able to last longer. Last longer. You've got a marathon athlete here. In your you pointers. Have a, yeah. This is the pointing guys. There. Point on point. Then you have the flushers. And they're more like your sprinters. Yes. Explosive power. Just imagine putting, you know, the big muscled up sprinter next to the guy that's um, a long distance marathon, ultra marathon runner. Typically. Really long and lean usually. Typically long and lean. 
they're going to run further longer because that's how they're built to do it. And that's what they're conditioned to do. So just like horses. I mean, there's different types of horses, you know, gated horses versus non-gated horses and they move differently. And they, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the same is said for breeds and where you were going with that, I believe is if you're letting your lab try and free hunt with the short hairs, they're going to tucker out pretty quickly drastically comparatively and so usually we would keep those dogs in a heel which also requires a higher level of obedience because they're healing through the field until those pointers go on point then you're sending them in for that explosive flushing energy to happen and we refer to that dog as the strike dog did you say that already i might have missed that we refer to this dog running into flush in front of pointers as the strike dog so Running a strike dog is kind of a fun way to hunt. It's a really cool thing. Now, I do want to challenge you guys, okay? Some of you may have seen some of the collaboration stuff that we've done with Lone Duck. Now, I got word that there's a good possibility, and I know a little nudge, nudge, poke, poke, wink, wink kind of thing could help with that, but I think he's going to be coming out this fall sometime to do some training out here, do some hunting, shoot the videos, Drink some bourbon, all the things, and that would be awesome. It would be I think really I know where cool. You're going with this, yeah. To to run the finished standing stone dogs with the finished lone duck strike dogs and put together a video showing firsthand how to do this. Now, all we need you to do, this is the important part here. The little nudge will be go over to Lone Duck. They have a search Lone Duck Outfitters. They have a YouTube channel. They've got a bunch of cool videos coming out. Find any video, watch any video you got there, and just start commenting, strike dog, anywhere you can. Strike dog, strike dog, strike dog. Come to Kansas. Come to Kansas. Strike dog is funny because he won't know where it came from, and then it'll take a while to figure it out. These are mind games. Mind games. I like it. Strike dog. Start commenting. Anybody that's watching this, start. Go to Lone Dog's page. Hit the subscribe button because their stuff's cool. And then strike dog. strike dog. Okay, Comment, I get where you're dog. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll, it'll be our little secret until he figures it out. So the ticket is make sure that your pointer has the additional level of steadiness to be ready for the strike dog and prepare this for before you are going to the field. You know, train like you want to hunt so you don't have to train as much while you hunt. These are important things. Really good question, and I think it's going to be an exciting opportunity to shoot another video. If we get him out here, we're going to be doing it. Pointers, retrievers, strike dog action. It'll be cool. Great. Let's go to our next question. Mm